So risk is a big topic and it's got lots of interesting parts and it's, it's actually quite an important policy area for government, as I'm, I'm sure many of you know. So today, I want to set the scene for our discussion today by talking about just three parts of risk and risk management. So one is to give you a quick introduction to the topic. Uh, second is to talk about how farmers have traditionally managed risk in Australia. And the third thing is to preview a few new risk management tools that are currently emerging. So risk is one of those terms that's very widely used, but often refers to different things. In the context of farming, risk refers to variation in farm profit, and in particular to the occurrence of very low values of farm profit. So here we can see the risk profiles of beef and cropping farms in Australia. The peak of each curve occurs at the value of profit that's most likely to occur in each industry. And overall, beef farmers have typically earned lower but more stable incomes than cropping farms who've earned higher average incomes but been exposed to greater potential losses. Now the squares show where farm cash income was last financial year. As you can see it was way above average in the cropping industry and well above average in the beef industry. And in, in practical terms we don't really think about this kind of upside variation as, as being risk. When we talk about risk, what we're really worried about is the values on the left-hand side of each distribution or the, the really low values of farm profit. So risk is caused by a lot of different things. Today we're primarily focused on the climate, but this isn't necessarily the greatest risk that farmers face and it certainly isn't the only risk that they face. Uh, they're also highly exposed to global commodity markets, which are at least as unpredictable as changes in the weather. So in aggregate terms, the two biggest drivers of risk on farms are seasonal conditions and commodity prices. Seasons affect how much you produce and prices determine what it's worth. We've recently done some analysis into the proportions of overall variance that can be attributed to these two sources. And these are still early results, but what they're showing is that for cropping farms, the climate is the greatest source of variation, while for beef farms, prices are actually slightly more important. And the main reason we think beef farms are more sensitive to changes in prices is that they don't have a great capacity to change the commodities they're producing when prices change. Whereas in the cropping industry, you can switch between different grains or into other crops and quite often into livestock. So the other thing is that this model only looks at annual profits at the moment, and that probably understates the climate effect that beef farmers face to some extent because it doesn't capture the effect of things like changes in livestock in inventories that occur following a drought. So regardless of its source, Australian farmers operate in the presence of substantial risk when compared with people in other industries within Australia and when compared with farmers in other countries. At least partly because they're so exposed to risk though, Australian farmers are generally very good risk managers. The main tools they use to manage risk are having high levels of equity, uh, some reserves of liquid assets and borrowing capacity, and diversification across enterprises and locations. And in the main, it appears that these tools work pretty well. When compared with other industries, farms have had one of the highest business survival rates in recent years, even though farming is a more variable industry than most of the others in the chart here. So this figure shows the proportion of business numbers that have remained active since June, or between June 2012 and June 2015. And we actually know the business survival is higher than the rates shown on the chart here because ABNs can change for a variety of reasons, not just the closure of, of a business. Probably more important than business survival though, when we look at farm households, we can see that they on average have greater wealth than households in the broader population and when we look at income, we can see that many farm households have the same or similar income to comparable households in the broader population. So these are aggregate statistics, of course, and they hide the fact that there's a distribution of farms. Some are more exposed to risk than others, and some farmers have more capacity to manage risk than others. Overall, though, the evidence we have suggests that the risk management tools Australian farmers are currently using are working pretty well. That being said, the market for risk management tools is changing, with several new products currently emerging. 
These are interesting because just like all other aspects of the business, farmers are generally trying to manage risk at the lowest possible cost. The tools they're using at the moment are effective, but they're certainly not cost free. And so if these new tools can offer a, a, a better value uh, to farmers, then they're likely to be taken up quite widely. So I want to give you a feel for just three of these products today. Weather derivatives, multi-peril insurance and mutuals. So weather derivatives protect against climate risk or weather risk and they're a bit like making bets on the weather. So they can be based on a single variable like rainfall or temperature and they're typically priced and managed using weather station data. So the derivative pays out if, for example, rainfall is below some pre-specified amount over a pre-specified period of time. The advantage of these products is that they're relatively low cost and quick and simple to operate. All that's really needed is the data from a weather station and a clever actuary to work out the price of each contract. The disadvantage of these products is that they don't provide complete protection against risk. So if you're located a long way from a weather station, it won't necessarily record the same conditions that you experience. And even if it does, the payout isn't based on what happens to your profit. It's only based on what happens to that rainfall or, or temperature variable. And the two aren't necessarily perfectly correlated. So one product that does give more complete protection against risk are multi-peril insurance products. The basic idea here is that these pay out when farm revenue or yield falls below some pre-agreed threshold for a wide range of reasons. The big advantage, as I said, is that these provide more complete protection against more of the risks that farmers face. As you can probably guess though, the disadvantage of these products is that they're relatively expensive. The biggest reason for this is that premiums have to cover the cost of payouts and the risks that are being covered by these policies are things that occur relatively often. So if we think about you know, the average farm, at some point in the next five to ten years, something like a drought or very high temperature or very low temperature or a flood or a fire, something like that is probably going to happen on a lot of farms in the next five to ten years. And this is quite different to other insurance policies we think about, like home and contents insurance, which you're probably assuming your home's not going to burn down over the, over the life of that policy. So. The other thing about these policies that makes them a bit expensive is that risks such as drought tend to affect many farmers at once, leading to a high number of simultaneous claims. And this means the risk can't be really spread across the pool of people who are insured, which means that the insurer has to hold quite a large pool of capital to cover potential payouts. And this is an expensive thing to do. So mutual arrangements are another form of risk management where farmers contribute to a fund that can be drawn on when a risk eventuates. These have quite a long history in agriculture. Some early mutuals were set up by Dutch farmers to help manage the risk of fire. Now, mutuals can be self-insuring, where the pool of shared funds is big enough to cover potential payouts in a particular year. And this works quite well for risks like fire that, are, that occur randomly, but given the big risks Australian farmers face are things like drought, which tend to affect everyone at the same time, the pool of funds that the mutual would need to hold would need to be quite large to cover payouts in a particular year. And in, in this case, the mutual would probably work by offering risk protection and then purchasing reinsurance to cover those payouts. And the consequence of this for things like multi-peril insurance is that premiums might still be pretty high for these products because the risks being covered are expensive to insure. Nonetheless, there are some ways that mutuals might reduce the cost of, to farmers of accessing risk protection. So this might be through things like offering multi-year policies or by diversifying risk within the mutual and then purchasing reinsurance for that more diversified risk. So one challenge mutuals face is that if all members in the mutual are charged the same price for insurance, then this will be too expensive for the farms that are least exposed to risk and too cheap for the most exposed farms. This creates a problem called adverse selection, where the, the least risky farmers have the least incentive to enter or to stay in the mutual, and if they leave, then the, the risk of the pool of people that is left in the mutual is higher than it was before, and so premiums have to go up, and then this continues the cycle. And uh, it's a sort of an administration, administrative challenge that arises with mutuals, and it actually arises with a lot of these forms of sort of cooperative in endeavour. 
So we're not aware of any mutuals currently offering commercial risk management products, but we are aware that uh, some mutuals exist and that um, other pilot studies are occurring to try and find some, some applications for them. So at this stage, we can say that farmers are generally managing risk well using existing tools, but these aren't cost free. And so there's potentially a market for these new tools if they can offer farmers cost effective protection against risk. Like any other new technology, farmers will weigh up the pros and cons and will vote with their feet if a great product comes along. All of this suggests there isn't necessarily much government or industry should be doing to encourage adoption of one product over another. And governments already provide quite a lot of support to farmers when risks become too great to manage. That said, one thing that would improve the risk management tools available to farmers is to invest in the data that underlies many of these products. And there's quite a bit happening on this front within government and across other parts of the industry at the moment. So a key resource is the Bureau of Met. Of course, weather forecasts are essential for managing climate risk and bomb data is also used to price weather derivatives. Grower groups also provide services such as yield profit or production wise that allow farmers to make more informed risk-based decisions. And of course, there's a whole range of businesses building digital based products for farmers to use, many of which capture vast amounts of data that could potentially be used to price or administer risk management products. So the final thing I wanted to mention in this line is some simulation modelling that ABES is doing. So we've built a model based on our survey data that can predict farm profit, farm revenue and farm costs based on some fixed inputs, prices and seasonal conditions. And CSIRO also have models that can do this kind of thing. And these could be useful for testing the likely effects on farm risk of new insurance products or new derivative products. They can also be used to assess the likely effects on risk of new government policies. In the most extreme case, the model itself could be used to create an index that could be the basis of a derivative product. And you could imagine that developing a product based on observed farm profit might be quite interesting to farmers because other derivative products are based on weather variables like rainfall or temperature, which aren't necessarily perfectly correlated with profit. And profit's probably the thing farmers are most interested in protecting. So overall, these improvements in data are likely to expand the range of risk management products that are available to farmers. I, I think the data side of things is most likely going to benefit the, the derivatives and other products that are you know, more sort of uh, data driven, but uh, they'll also probably help with insurance products. Um, although I think the big driver of premiums for insurance products are going to remain the nature of those risks that are insured. So we don't exactly know the direction the market for risk management products will take, but given all these developments are happening and the fact that you know, we look at the digital economy, we can see that people find all sorts of interesting uses for data when it becomes available. So I think looking ahead, we can safely say watch this space. Thank you.